Hi, my presentation is on power and art. The first artist we will be looking at is Jacques Louis David. He was the most celebrated French artist of his day and a principal exponent of the late 18th century neoclassical art movement. David was widely acclaimed with his huge canvases on classical themes. He later developed a style that is more realistic than classical and eventually he was appointed painter to Napoleon. Napoleon crossing the St. Bernard. In Jacques Louis David's artwork, Napoleon shows his power and authority with the hierarchical of positioning. When this piece came out, it was seen as lifeless and emitting power, while others saw it as pure propaganda. Napoleon is pictured on an Arabian stallion with the mountains in the distance, and the French troops hauling a large cannon behind him. Napoleon was one of the most powerful men in history, and this artwork emits just that. While history books paint a picture of Napoleon as being short and a sickly man, this artwork paints him as a tall st and strong man that is capable of leading an army. Napoleon truly emits his right of this power with his positioning on the stallion. The Coronation of Napoleon Another one of David's most famous paintings is the Coronation of Napoleon. Napoleon is the person in the middle holding the crown. And while the painting shows the moment that Napoleon is about to place the crown on the head of his wife, Josephine, who is kneeling on a pillow, Napoleon wears a, his coronation robe, which is similar to the robes worn by a Roman Empire, which truly emits his power. The second artist we are looking at is Marcus Jehoretz the Younger. He was an artist from 1561 through 1636 and was recognized for 29 portraits. He was born in Bruges, Belgium. His father was a painter and a printmaker. His family relocated to London when he was about seven years old. And in time, he became, he began to be paid for the portraits and decorative works for the English court. He also became known as the most distinguished and most fashionable portraitists of the 1590s. Queen Elizabeth I, the D Ditchley Portrait. His artwork of Queen Elizabeth, in his artwork of Queen Elizabeth, he paints her in an outfit that is more elaborate than her husband's, which admits that Queen Elizabeth, who was well known for her efforts to manipulating fashion during the period, was truly powerful. It's no worth noting that both of them controlled fashion in the Renaissance period, both men and women, and also during this period, power women held was shown in fashion. It can be argued that this painting is a portrayal of power in art from the clothes the queen is wearing and the background. Our last artist is Jean August Dominique Ingres. He was born in Mountainbon, France and he received his first artistic instruction from his father, Jean-Marie Joseph Ingres. He was an artist and a jack of all trades with a modest talent but considerable professional social pretensions. Commission for monumental paintings were rare, so Ingres contented himself with working on more restrained scales. It was during this period that he emerged as a master of the so-called tabular Tabudor genre, paintings of medieval and renaissance subjects that reflected the artist's mannerisms, mannerisms of the period de depicted. Napoleon on his imperial throne. Ingres captured Napoleon's representation of power with the sword under his arm, and Ingres' painting is a conscious act of propaganda, cementing in the public's mind that the image of the emperor is almost godlike, so that emits his power and dominion. Ingres' painting was originally dismissed as overly gothic, archeric, and barbaric.
the last portrait we'll be looking at is Madame Moistier. Madame Moistier was among Ingrid's last major portraits and ranks alongside his earlier realist paintings. Ingrid was invited to paint her portrait and insisted on painting every detail from life so he could achieve, in his words, the faithful rendering of nature that leads to art. With minute accuracy, he has recorded the light-absorbing darkness of her lace and the velvet costume she wears, the gleam of the gold jewelry, and the gloss of her elaborate coiffure. The, emph <laughs> the emphasis on reality of these details contrasts with her unfazed focus, contributing to the sense that she is somehow removed from life. Thank you for watching my video. Have a great day!